There may be times where you want to control the data that's entered into a cell that has to meet certain criteria. For example, I have three employees that will be entering in their expenses for the first quarter for airfare, car rental, meals, and so on. But I don't want them to expense or enter any data or numbers that, let's say, is $1,000 or more or over $1,000. So to control that, I'm going to go ahead and select the range that I want to control and apply the validation rule to it. To do that, come up here, click on the Data tab, go to the Data Tools group, and you can either click on the Data Validation button or click on the drop-down arrow. It's right there as well. Click on it. Opens up. Now, by default, all the cells in the workbook allow any value to be inputted. But we're going to change that and say it's going to be decimal. And we want decimal because we not only want it in dollars but also cents, you know, like 0.35 or 0.25. And the data range is going to be between, let's say, zero, in case if they don't expense it, they can enter in zero amount. The maximum will be a thousand. So we don't want anything over a thousand. Now we could go ahead and click OK there, but that doesn't tell them anything. It's just that they'll be frustrated because they can't enter in, well, a thousand, five dollars, or two thousand dollars. But we can give them some messages, and you have two different types. You have the input message and the error alert. First, the input message. It'll actually show the message when they enter or select the cell, so there will be a pop-up warning them. You don't have to use that message, you can uncheck it and just go with the error alert, meaning that they can go ahead and go into the cell and start typing, let's say $2,000. The moment they try to enter that, it'll give them the error here. But you know what? Instead of having that, how about if we give them a warning, an input message here that says something like, well, for the title, something like that, okay? And then we can go to the error alert in case if they ignore the input message and they still try to type in something over a thousand. We can say, okay, go ahead and show this error. And you've got three different types of errors. You have the stop, which means that it prevents them from entering in anything over a thousand. Then you have warning and information. Warning just says, okay, here's a warning, but you can go ahead and enter in more than a thousand. In other words, it'll bypass the validation, but not without a warning first. And maybe that's good because you might have some employees that you want to warn and tell them that they got to have management approval because if not, they won't get paid on it, paid out for their expenses. So let's go ahead and do stop first and then enter in a title for this message. And then when you're finished, let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. Click okie dokie. Now, like I said, you have two different types of messages. Here's the first message, the input message. Anytime you click anywhere within that range, gives you a pop-up, so it gives you a warning or a flag here that says, hey, the expense amounts, please enter in the expense amount. You could have also said in the input message, only enter in expenses below 1,000. So let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. If I type in 3,000 and hit enter, there we go. There's the invalid data. You must enter in a value less than 1,000. You can go ahead and retry, try it again, or if it's not accepting it, click cancel, then go ahead and talk to the manager saying, hey, I can't expense this, and then work it out with them. In any case, we prevented them from entering in anything more than a thousand. So if they go ahead and they type in, you know, 999, hit enter, they're okay. And then of course, if you want to make any changes to it, just go ahead and be sure to select the entire range that you apply the uh, validation rule to, and come back up here, click on data validation, and then instead of a stop, let's do a warning. And then we don't have to have the input message, uncheck that, and then click OK. So any cell that we have selected doesn't give us the pop-up. And then because we gave it a warning, we can go ahead and type in something over a thousand, hit enter. It says, okay, even though you must enter in a value, do you want to continue? If you say yes, it accepts it, you can move on. But at least we get the warning. Let me give you another example here. You can begin to figure this out here, the data validation. How about the destination? It's going to be some state. But let's go ahead and have that state abbreviated to two letters. Like for Utah, it's got to be UT, California, CA. So you want to put a validation rule to that by selecting the cell, coming up here, clicking on Data Validation. Let's go to the Settings tab and click on the drop-down arrow. And we want to limit the text length between 0 and the maximum is going to be 2. Then, of course, you can have an input message if you think that's going to be apropos. Or let's do an error alert and let's say... We're going to stop them because it's got to be something simple. Click okie dokie. So if we come up here and we try to enter in the state of uh, Utah and we type in more than two characters, hit enter, we get our error. We can retry and then do UT, hit enter, two characters, we're good to go. Now, another way to validate your data 
is that if you have a list that you want them to pick from, for example, for the department, we've got a list of departments down here. Go ahead and type in the list, either down below within your uh, worksheet, or you can actually enter it in later. But for this way, what we want them to do is to come up here and click on a drop down arrow to choose from the list that's going to be based upon this range here. And again, we're going to use the data validation. We're validating the data that we want them to um, input into the cell for department. Select it, click on data validation. Let's go to the settings tab, and we want a list. Now I can go ahead and type in the list here and separate them by commas, you know, sales, training, and then click OK. Get the drop down arrow, and it's right there. That works. Or let me go ahead and hit undo. Or to clear it out, I can just click on data validation again, and then delete that, and then choose my source, either again typing it in, or with the uh, cursor flashing in the cell, just come over here if you can see it, and then click and drag, and then let go. And notice that when it selects it, it's selecting the range from A17 through A21. But if you recall in the training video on named ranges, I assume that you watched that, this is the name of this range the name that I gave it, department. So I can just type in equals department, and that's the same as typing in equals A17 colon A21. Again, A17 through A21. So when I'm finished, click OK, click on the drop down arrow, and I get to choose from the list. Which makes it nice because I can control the uh, data that they input, or that they, in this case, select from. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you get online access to all my training. Or for downloads and DVDs, please visit me at dreamforce.us.